Periscope, a weekly public affairs program brought to you in partnership with the Urban League of Greater Cleveland, Kaleidoscope Magazine, and News Channel 5. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the broadcast today. The City of Cleveland's Division of Waste Collection will launch the next phase of its automated waste collection and recycling program. It began on September the 6th. Well, Commissioner Ron Owens is here to talk more about the program. Then Case Western Reserve University student Cy Kolaru will share his view on embracing each other's cultural t traditions later and later in the broadcast. Marsha Maccabee and Mervyn Jones will share information about the annual Stephanie Tubbs Jones Gospel Fest, as it is called, coming up. And good morning. I'm Leon Bibb. This is Kaleidoscope, and so we begin. Beginning with one of the good guys out of City Hall. Of course, they're all good guys out of City Hall, aren't they, Ron Owens? Yes, they are. He's <laughs> Commissioner of the City of uh, Cleveland Division of Waste Collection. Good to have you with us, Ron. Thank you for having me. Ron is a regular with us. He's here every few months or so. You're going to talk. We're going to talk. I always say this. We're going to talk a little trash. Yeah, we're going to talk we? a little trash today. <laughs> My trash collection and all of that in the City of Cleveland. You got a new program which you've rolled out in early September. Tell me about that. Well, this program is a program that Mayor Jackson initiated to gain some efficiencies and uh, generate some uh, improved services to the residents of the city of Cleveland. Uh, so starting uh, September 6th, we rolled out uh, our containers to 25,000 households, and we're going to do that over a three-week period. And each resident is going to receive two new carts, one black cart for their regular trash, and then the blue cart for their recyclables, which is the glass, the plastics, the aluminum, the newspaper, and the cardboard. To help the city separate all of this stuff so that we can recycle when we need to recycle. Exactly. Yeah. Recycling is very key to this situation. Uh, not only is it environmentally friendly for us, mm -hmm. but it also generates some additional revenue for the city. How big are these new carts that you're, that you're giving to each homeowner, uh, each uh, resident, I guess each, each uh, household, right? Yeah, each household will receive two carts. One, the black cart will be a 96-gallon mm -hmm. size cart. Mm -hmm. That's where you put all your trash. Mm -hmm. And then the recyclables you put in the 64-gallon cart, uh, which is a slightly smaller than that uh, trash container. Now, what happens when the truck, the big truck, comes along? Well, that will be a different method of collecting the trash. Now, what it, what's going to happen is we're going to have an automated system, which means there will be one man in the truck, and there will be an arm that reaches out, mm -hmm. grab the garbage can, brings it back in, and dumps it, and put it back right where they left off. Uh -huh. So that's going to keep on rolling by, and then you'll see a second truck, such as a recycling truck, come by and pick up those recyclables. Yes. Now, does this costing the the, 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 the homeowner e any more? No, it doesn't cost you anything extra. Um, it's already covered with the um, residential waste fee that you're currently paying. It's already in there. Yes. It's already packaged so all these in are there. free of charge. Mm -hmm. What happens if somebody forgets to put their stuff uh, in, in that in that those special bins that they ha that you have? Well, we ask that people utilize those bins for the proper material. Um, if they do not properly prepare their trash, they may be subject to a fine. Mm -hmm. And we have rules and regulations that they can call us or look on our website to see what that information is. Now, if they just forget to put their trash out, yeah. they can just give us a call and normally we'll come back and provide them that service that same day. Uh, now, we're trying to put the, how many of these uh, new carts are we putting out and in what neighborhoods are you being Beginning. Well, we're going to spread it out across the city. Uh, we're starting uh, with 25,000 households. Uh, we have 15 designated areas with all wards being touched. And then we're going to expand this each year until we cover the entire city. Yeah. You think we can all, all, all do this now? We're getting to be more recyclable, what of the word, uh, recycle-minded, recycle-minded. Yes. All of us. It's, we're, we're growing into that, aren't we? Yes. If you really think about it, about 70, 80 years ago, we're actually going back to that process where they used to separate their trash and their putrescibles, as they call them. But now what they're doing, we just combined them all together. But now we're going back to that process again where we're separating our trash. Let's say I got an item that's just too big, a bulk item, to fit into the, 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 uh, the, the containers that the city gives. What does that person do? Well, we want you to put that out on your regular trash day like you normally would put your trash out. But here's how we want that set out to look like. We would like for you to have your black container out with your regular trash in there. We'd like for you to have your recyclable container out. And then right next to that recycling container, you can put your bulk items, your yard waste, mm -hmm. or your tires. Yeah. And we will come by and collect those. Mm -hmm. Now, when I recycle in my community, one of the things I do is take my, my plastic water bottles and pop bottles, and they go in a special container. And, and all of that is separate. What happens to all of these recyclables once you guys get them in the city? Where do you take them? 
But once we get them, we have a contractor that processes those recyclables for us, which means they separate them out into different categories, and then they sell them on the open market. And once they sell those recyclables, we actually get a return on that uh, to the city of Cleveland for as a rebate. So we're really helping the city uh, make a couple of bucks yes. by, by recycling and cleaning up our environment along the way. Yes, it's a positive and win-win both situation environmentally as well, well as with, um, dealing with additional revenues. Now you've been doing this for a few years now at City Hall, right? Yes, I, I mean, have. You, you, you know trash like nobody else knows trash. <laughs> oh, trash has been yeah. very good to you. Uh, it's, it's been very good to you. And things are going well for you at City Hall. Now how many years have you been working at City Hall? Actually I've been there 30 years now. It's mm -hmm. been good um, progressing my way up through the yeah. system and things have been working out well. You're, you're quite the public servant, Ron, uh, Ron Owens. So you're quite the public servant. That's why we're always glad to have you on the broadcast. Is there something we need to keep in mind as the city begins this new uh, uh, trash collection program, the automated trash collection program? Yeah, the main thing to keep in mind that, you know, we're providing this service to improve the efficiency and to improve the service to the residents. And we just ask for them to work with us to make this system work. Mm -hmm. You know, utilize the, prop the containers properly um, so that this system can provide the services that it was designed to. If somebody's got a question, can to make a phone call to City Hall and get, and get answers to perhaps something we did not cover here in our interview. Sure, they can call us at 664-3717. And you can get all the answers to the questions you need on, on trash and, and the new automated trash collection program. Yes, they can, okay. yes. Things are well for you, Ron. Thanks. Well, good to have you on the broadcast. Thank you so much. Okay, it's always good to have a good guy from City Hall, Cleveland City Hall, on the broadcast with us. Ron Owens, he's Commissioner, City of Cleveland Division of Waste Collection. I'm going to take a break right now. This is Kaleidoscope. Up next, we're going to talk about cultural traditions with a young man who's a student at Case Western Reserve University who was also an intern in the nation's White House. We'll hear from him after this. Welcome back to more of Kaleidoscope today. Cy Kolaru is a student at Case Western Reserve University. He just completed an internship at the White House. And Cy is here to share his thoughts with us and taking some time to educate us about our cultural differences and traditions and his philosophy on all of that. Good to have you with us, Cy. Thank you for having me. Yeah. You're a student at Case Western. What year are you in and what are you studying? I'm going to be a senior um, and I'm studying mechanical engineering. Uh -huh. And where's home for you? Danbury, Connecticut. Well, good to have you here in Cleveland at Case Western. Western Reserve University, getting a good education, I'm certain. Absolutely. Yeah, well, good. You just uh, left the White House. Tell me about this. You were an intern at the nation's White House. So. The White House experience was uh, incredible. Um, I was in the Office of Public Engagement, um, which is a liaison office between the President and the American people. Um, it, it was absolutely incredible. We, um, it was a two-and-a-half-month project uh, internship, and um, we had a chance to uh, volunteer in various activities. Um, uh, and do service projects. We had um, uh, part of our internship program was a speaker series, mm -hmm. so we got to hear from um, senior White House officials, and I was just uh, it was just incredible. Where did you apply for this? Where did they get your name? And so I actually uh, in the fall of um, 2010, I went to a conference, an interfaith conference at the White House, um, which uh, had uh, you know, all traditions, all religions, representatives from each tradition represented there, and um, just had the thought, you know, mechanical engineer, but mm -hmm. doesn't doesn't hurt to apply for the internship and um, uh, they were looking for public service experience yeah and I, was, I was working with refugees and I was doing mm -hmm. a lot of things in the end with Bhutanese refugees mm -hmm. and you got some time to, to spend some time with the president I, I guess I hope it, yes yes mm -hmm. it was uh, it was incredible how was it working with President Obama it was great it was uh, it was just fantastic very inspiring yeah um, everyone's committed and and you just uh, have a lot of appreciation for this country after yeah, you work there. Yeah. How long were you an intern at the White House? I was. I started May t 31st and I ended um, August 14th. Uh -huh. Well, it was a good, good stretch of time there. That's good. Nice That's showing good. up at work at the White House. Go absolutely. Going through the big iron gates and going on in. Uh, Every day, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. You told us that you were there for an interfaith conference and, and that's how you really got, got on, 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 on the avenue toward, toward being a White House intern. Right. And you're here to talk a little bit about the interfaith right. and about uh, uh, cultural traditions and, and accepting differences. Tell us your thoughts on that. Right. Um, I, I, um, uh, we always say religious tolerance in our country when we're, when we're uh, meeting people of, of various traditions. And religious tolerance has a very, uh, sort of a negative tone to it. When you say tolerance, you're, you're sort of saying you're accepting someone. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, what, what 
from my perspective, what we should start doing is, is religious celebration, is just working towards celebrating each other's uh, traditions. Um, the tradition that I come from, Hinduism, we say the truth is one, but the path are many. Um, and so, um, from everyone, every tradition has something to offer. Every tradition has a common human value that makes us all human. Um, so, uh, you know, as we continue to, to bring our individuality, preserve our individuality, according to our own personal growth, we should also sort of educate a little bit about each of our traditions. And that way, as a, as a world is becoming more globalized and more connected, we, we also know what, where people come from. Are we getting better at that here in the United States? Do you think we're getting better at it? I think so. I think so. The um, United States is, is, is a melting pot for, for all traditions. We all come here um, from all parts of the world, um, and, we, and we work hard to, to really achieve the American dream. Um, and, and along that, we, we sort of also learn about each other. We, we invite each other to each other's homes, and that's what we stand for. We're, uh, a, na a nation of immigrants and uh, uh, a melting pot for religions and cultures. And yeah. So now, now, how do you go about, uh, as, you, as you do your studies at, at Case Western Reserve University, do you speak on this, this philosophy? And are you involved with, 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 with projects where this philosophy is embraced? Absolutely. I uh, co-founded an organization called Hindu Yuva, Youth for Unity, Virtues and Action. And um, I co-founded that along with two other students my freshman year. And um, every Sunday, we uh, take a trip down to um, uh, West Park in Cleveland mm -hmm. and visit Bhutanese refugees. And on that trip, there are Hindus, Muslims, Christians, uh, Jewish uh, groups, um, representatives from various religious organizations on campus that all join us um, to uh, use faith as an inspiration, uh, faith-inspired service mm -hmm. to help uh, these Bhutanese refugees who were religiously persecuted from Bhutan. We got about a minute remaining in our interview with you. As you look at all of these various people from various walks of life and religions, is there a common thread that is wound through all of them? Uh, absolutely. I, I mean, uh, it, religion is uh, a means to achieve um, uh, whatever you want to achieve spiritually. Um, and so uh, what makes us all religious or spiritual or, or have our own path is, is the fact that we're human. We're human beings um, and we are, we are here uh, and uh, there's, there's a certain unity in the diversity um, that's, that's within us. So. Uh, I once heard somebody say that God walks on many pathways. Absolutely. Yeah. Good to have you with us. Cy Kolaru, he's a Case Western Reserve University student studying mechanical engineering, a senior from Danbury, Connecticut, who's in Cleveland and just got out of the White House where he did an internship under the administration of President Barack Obama. Good to have you with us, Cy, and thank you for your words of wisdom. We do appreciate it. Absolutely. Good luck to you, Cy. Thank you, Cy. Good luck to you. Be well. Be well. I'm going to take a break right now. We're going to hear about a gospel tradition coming up next. Marsha Maccabee of the Urban League of Greater Cleveland will be here with some thoughts on that. Welcome back to Morph Kaleidoscope today. The annual Stephanie Tubbs Jones Gospel Fest, sponsored by Case Western Reserve University, takes place on October the 16th. Honorary chairperson is Marsha Maccabee and Mervyn Jones, son of the late Stephanie Tubbs Jones. They're both here to talk more about this annual event. Good to have you with us, Thanks Marsha. Oh, always good to have you on the broadcast as well. But Mervyn, yeah. good to have you with us too. Uh, thanks for having me. This is just a great stage for us to talk about a great event that's yeah. going to help out the city. Named in memory of your mother, the, yes. the Congresswoman Stephanie yes. Tuss Jones, and, and we miss her. She's been gone so long. Oh, I miss her now. dearly. Yeah. I, I, I know you do. Tell, tell me about the significance of the Stephanie Tubbs Jones Annual Gospel Fest. As you know, and a lot of other people know that my mother was raised in the church, and gospel music, was a big factor and even a part in a lot of people's lives are just raising them, just knowing about how things are supposed to be. Uh, the Gospel Fest is extending her memory and her thoughts about ex uh, doing better in the community. John Hay, mm -hmm. who has come a long way mm -hmm. in the past couple of years and they're contributing back to the community. John Hay High School. Yes, John Hay High School and along with Case Western Reserve University who has been putting this on faithfully. Uh, they have been a great help to me and my family and of course my mother was an alumni at Case Western Reserve. Yeah. 
It's going to be Sunday, October the 16th at 3 o'clock at John Hay High School, which is located at 2075 Stokes Boulevard. If you can find the intersection of Stokes Boulevard and, and Carnegie or Stokes Boulevard and Euclid Avenue, you're at John Hay High School. You're honorary chairperson this year. I am. T tell me about the role that you play in, I am. And, why, and why you're involved. Yes, Leon, and indeed I'm honored. And, and Mervyn, I'm not sure you know this, but your mom and I went to school together. We went to Collinwood High School together. Mm -hmm. Railroaders. Yes, yeah, absolutely, both of them absolutely. Of, of we did. Collinwood. We we mm -hmm. did indeed. And um, I, Stephanie was someone I looked up to when I was mm -hmm. in high school, and um, we had a great relationship and continued that beyond as we began to move in our circles within the Greater Cleveland community. So when President Barbara Snyder asked me, because I'm also a Case alum, uh -huh. uh, I have a certificate in nonprofit management from Case. So when she asked me to be the honorary chair, I was just absolutely. Um, ecstatic. A uh, couple of things. Number one, uh, I'm a gospel uh, music uh, enthusiast and just love gospel music and I really saw my role this year as one of helping Case Western Reserve to really help take this gospel fest to yet another level. Yeah. Um, so this year we're excited because we're incorporating some praise dancers and some young praise dancers and I know Stephanie would have just loved oh, yeah. that aspect she, of she would have loved, She would have loved oh, that yeah. one, she Mervyn. <laughs> Every aspect that you can get the message out about your faith and how you love your faith mm -hmm. and your community, she yeah. was all for it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and tell us a little bit about the lineup. Who, who's going to be performing there, Mervyn? Okay. I know you've got a list, a list of them right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So right now we have Case Western Reserves University's Voices of Glory. Uh, they've been spectacular the last couple of years. Uh, Cleveland Metropolitan School District, All Cities Arts Choir. Uh, we have Called. This is a new group to me, but I'm sure they're going to be phenomenal. Cleveland Church of Christ, Citadel of Hope Ministries, Praise Dancers. I can't wait for that person. Yeah. Uh, Temple Baptist Church and the Reggie Golden and the Fresh uh, Encounters. Mm -hmm. So we have a tremendous lineup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to be the master of ceremonies of the program. I'm oh, going to be there be Sunday, October the 16th, yes. 3 o'clock at John Hay High School. That's on the Cleveland East Side, located at Euclid Avenue and Stokes Boulevard. Right. Uh, or Euclid or, or, or Carnegie Avenue and Stokes Boulevard. It kind of it, it sits in between those two two places. And the event is free. Yes. That's always a good number. That's a good number. Okay, now we got a full house. <laughs> everybody we says, we well, Leon, have. Leon, Absolutely. Mervyn, well, Marsha, everybody said, I'm going to be there. That's right. right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. That's we just right. need to pack the house that night mm -hmm. yes. so we can blow the roof off the top yeah. of that place and yes. let everybody know we're there. Yeah. I mean, this is a great concert series. This is a great cause. This is just something to say, hey, mm -hmm. John Hay is here. Yeah. Case Western Reserve is here. Community, come support your community. And the spirit of your mother, Definitely. Congresswoman Stephanie Tubbs Jones, Definitely. is still very much here. You know we miss her so much. Oh, we miss her so much. Uh, uh, Marsha Fudge is doing a wonderful job. Oh, definitely. Uh, as Lewis Stokes did a wonderful job before your mother became. We're passing on the tradition. And passing it's great. on the tradition, it's and the tradition great. has been passed on. Definitely. But your mother made a mark in this community, Mervyn. I definitely. want you to know that. And, and she was loved universally in this community. Mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. yes, she was. Even people on the other side of the political aisle yeah. respected and it loved your mother. Did. Definitely. Yes. That's what her whole thing was, was respect. No matter what you see ideologically, whatever you see politically, her ideal was to be respectful. Mm -hmm. If you don't have respect, you can't build on anything. Mm -hmm. You can't build towards anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So without that, we really have nothing. She and I went to the same elementary school, Miles Standish Elementary School, and we were affected by the same teachers. Yeah. We were a couple of years apart, but we were affected by the same teachers. Yeah. Elizabeth Clark, Peter Homick, and other other teachers there at Miles Standish Elementary School. Oh, yeah. yeah. Always heard great stories about Miles Standish yeah. and Collinwood. Yeah. It's been a great, it's been great growing up here, living here, and raising my own. Yeah. So, October the 16th, Sunday, you'll be there as honorary chairperson. Absolutely. Mervyn is going to be there. That's a Sunday. Yeah. Three o'clock, yes. John Hay High School. Yes. That's where you're going to hear the Stephanie Tubbs Jones Gospel Fest. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of good music and a lot of good praying and a lot of good yes. songs going on. Yes. All of that's going to be wonderful. Yes. Okay. That's going to do it for us. We appreciate you being with us. This is Kaleidoscope. Be well. Mm -hmm.
segment. I closed out the show, not realizing we've got two and a half minutes more to go in a final segment here. That we're going to close it out right now. You wanted to add something about the, the, the Stephanie Tubbs Jones Gospel Fest tickets. I did. I did, Leon. Uh, to register, as you mentioned earlier, the event is free and open to the community. And as Mervyn said, we want to pack the house out that day. For tickets or more information, you need to call 216-368-1723. Again, 216-368-1723. Now, these, these are free tickets. These I mean, we want to know tickets. how many people are. We're trying to kind of uh, orchestrate mm -hmm. it so we can exactly. get everybody in, right. in the place right. and know how yeah. many people are going. And we want the people who get the tickets to show up. Right. If That's you important. get a ticket, please, <laughs> please show, come. So if they make a phone call, this, yes. is, this is important to us all, isn't it? As yes. we continue your mom's legacy, yes. as we continue the, the thought of your mother and the mm -hmm. remembrance mm -hmm. of your remembrance mm -hmm. of your mother. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that. Once again, I'm going to just uh, point this out. Like Case Western Reserve is a school that she went to, not just undergrad, mm -hmm. but yeah, law school as well. Mm -hmm. John Hay, one of the biggest schools that she wanted to support while she was in her, uh, while she was still in office, it was one of the biggest schools that she wanted to help out because we lived in that community. I grew yeah. up on Wade Park, which is right across the right. street from Wade, Case Western Reserve. Exactly. Uh, my mother, like I said, went to school there, so we want to affect the community as positively as we can. She was Cleveland. Yes. And uh, yes. you are Cleveland, and I'm Cleveland, and Marsha's Cleveland. We all are, yes. Yeah, we're all Cleveland, and we're trying to keep this Cleveland thing going, and Definitely. certainly in, in memory of her mother. It's the Stephanie Tubbs Jones Gospel Fest, going to be October the 16th, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. That's a Sunday afternoon at John Hay High School, located at 2075 Stokes Boulevard, right in University Circle area. You get the University Circle area. If you're lost, just say, where's John A? And somebody say, there it is right there. Mm -hmm. It's that close. Absolutely. So good to have you on the broadcast. Many thanks. Yeah. Mervyn and Marsha. Yes. M&M's. Hey. Oh, right. I like that. Oh. All right. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to do it for Kalina Still. We're having some fun here. We hope it's been a good day for you. Be well, everyone. So long. Kaleidoscope, a weekly public affairs program brought to you in partnership with the Urban League of Greater Cleveland, Kaleidoscope Magazine, and News Channel 5.